Working in the storm damage, we're going to take and think through the process, hazards, and anything overhead or anything that might uh, cause some danger to the operator. Then we start to look, can it go side to side? Next is looking at up and down pressure. Is it supported to where the top is going to be the compression side or be the bottom is going to be the compression side? Also back pressures and whether it's on the line or it has a top against something here, we can end up uh, thinking about back pressure that can stick our saw. When we work with storm damage, I want to think about three rules we've kind of adopted. First one is one person on the tree with a chainsaw until it's stabilized. Second, try to work from the butt end of the tree towards the top. And the third is don't pass any limbs as you go in that direction. For instance, on this tree right here, I'm about uh, eight feet, I guess, from it. The limb structures are up here overhead. Maybe if you come down here, you can kind of see this is looking down the trunk. It's up against another tree. Uh, there's limbs that are bent over and spring types up in the other tree that could be pushing. These limbs are bowed back over to the left. So if I was to come up here and try to reduce some of this, I have a, I have a little sweet gum tree here that's blocking things, but, but more or less, wherever I cut right here, I'm, I'm in, a, in a danger zone. In other words, it could roll over and be able to uh, get to me. There's really no escape should uh, something start to break or roll this direction. Uh, taking this from the crown end, you know, everything's got to be moved as I cut. And so it's a, really a lot more work. They say, well, we don't do a whole lot of tree felling, but we do a lot of cleanup after storms. Limbs of this diameter, that's felling a tree. And if you don't control it, it can fall, flip, come at you very quickly. Plan each one of those as a tree felling and basically reduce it and then figure out how you're going to separate the trunk as you work your way up everything down to the ground as you go you always have an escape back away from possible movement <laughs> If you pull the chain away from that bar, where does that pressure go? If I pull the chain up on the bar like this, where does the pressure go? It pulls the crankshaft and the, and the sprocket tip. So there it goes out that way, doesn't it? So where would the where would the compression side be on that? I'd say it's the side you're stuck on, isn't it?